Hi, I'm Clive Betts. I'm Head of People Development at the University, but I'm also a professional entomologist in my spare time. That means I'm really interested in insects and their relatives and everything they do and everything they are on this planet. Keep the pond. Not it's quite, not quite. I'm nearly there. Not far. Right on. Insects are, I would say, the most amazing animals. There's more of them than any other animal. There's more different sorts than any other animal, if we're not talking about bacteria or viruses. And they have the most amazing different forms. So they're adapted to all kinds of different ways of living and different places where they live in. Including, of course, alongside humanity. And all the terrible things we're doing, and all the good things too, uh, they adapt to that as well. I, I can't help but notice that you're carrying a very large net. Yes. <laughs> what, what is it that we're going to be doing today? Today we're going to go pond dipping. Now, pond dipping is fantastic if you're a kid, but it's also great if you're an adult as well. Because you never know what you're going to find. And that sense of excitement is, is always with me. If you're walking around, you're looking at butterflies and dragonflies flying around, you, you know, oh, that's a butterfly over there. I'm probably going to find a, a beetle if I lift up this log. In a pond, you never know what you're going to get. There might be something which has flown there just recently and it lands in your net, a great silver diving beetle, or it might be a, a, a fantastic uh, caddisfly nymph which you haven't seen before. Or it might be an alder fly which you've never spotted. All these kinds of things are in there somewhere. And uh, you need a net to pick them up. You mentioned caddisflies. Tell me more about the caddisfly. I think caddisflies are interesting. Caddisflies, some of them build a home out of things they find in, in the ponds and in the streams. So some of them will, will uh, cement together little tiny bits of sand grains and some of them can produce sort of rectangular homes, pyramidal homes. Others uh, disguise themselves by cementing loads of bits of leaves and things like this over, over their bodies. And they cement it using silk. Silk is, a, is an amazing uh, product of the invertebrate world. Spiders in particular, of course, and of course, uh, silk moths. So they build a home for themselves and they can carry that home around with them, which gives them a bit of protection, a bit of uh, disguise as well. Some of them are ambush predators, so they'll hunt other things and they'll come out of their, their home and, go, and grab something as it walks by. Um, others will feed on uh, plant materials, etc., and just carry their home around for protection. Yep. So, shall we have a go? I'll, I'll show you first of all. You've got to watch what I do. I'm going to cheat a bit because I've got a much bigger net. Caddisfly is amazing things. They look like moths when they're adults. Thicker front wings and much paler, finer hind wings, but a lot long antennae. They don't have the sort of curly proboscis you see on moths and butterflies. Oh, I can see a massive fish. Look. Don't catch that one. <laughs> yeah, don't catch that one because it won't fit in there. It probably won't fit in there. No, it would be bigger than a tray, wouldn't it? Yeah. Oh, no. no there you want your caddisfly. Right? I yeah. need, need, there need. Really? So that's a oh. caddis case. How exciting. Whoa, now I got one. Can you see? Now I got one. Oh, oh, that is, there's a lot so of fly. It's made of, of um, a tube. Leaf and things to its Where? body. Here? Yeah. Right. And it lives inside it. Wow. Can you see, wow. Can you see it poking out here? There's a stick moving around. This little stick is mm -hmm. walking. There's a walking stick here. Oh, yeah. Can you see yeah. it? It's yeah. made itself. Let's see. A special house. Come, come round a bit, Ben, and have a look. Sticky tube. Caddisfly larvae, Trichoptera. At first, we take its chamber for a twig, a dark length among the dredgings. Then it moves, and we see it is a sleeve stitched and glued careful decoupage of wet black leaf. Feelers extrude like tobacco shreds from a roll-up cigarette. Then the nymph hauls out, its lemon belly feathery with gills, like an exposed nerve, a tender knuckle emerging from its foreskin, pleasure branching. Soon it will cap its chamber shut, like a cartridge of gunpowder, melt inside, alchemize, then come summer explode, with wings that slope like a gabled roof should it perch. But mostly it's flown beyond its hoveled self, hurtling gold, a flicker in the bright fired morning of desire, its open mouth. Why is it particularly 
urgent right now that we should be paying more attention to insects? I think you probably hear in the media that we're at a cusp. This generation, the next generation, maybe the one after that, have the chance to stop or even reverse the loss of biodiversity. Now, biodiversity is a very broad term. It's, it's very widely used. People generally don't understand what it really means. Biodiversity is not just killing off things like um, pandas and rhinoceroses, although they are important animals and they're representative. They're really interesting sort of key figurehead animals to, to show that we're, we're doing damage to the natural world. But also it's the little things like bees who pollinate our crops and who pollinate our, our garden flowers, etc. Wasps who hunt down the, the pests, as we call them. And then beetles and bugs, uh, flies, worms, snails. I could go on and I could go on. But there's lots and lots of things. And that's just the terrestrial things. Then you start looking at things in the sea. The crabs, the shrimps, the fish, the jellyfish, the sea urchins, the starfish. Things in freshwater. Um, we have things like dragonflies and damselflies, which we all love seeing. But what's going to happen to them if we remove all the ponds, or if we pollute all the waters, or if we dig up all the hedgerows where, where the animals like the birds and the bees and the flies and the beetles live, or if we just concrete over everywhere because we need more houses to live in? What happens to that biodiversity? It goes, and people say, oh, so what? We'll still have crops we can self-pollinate. We can walk around with little paintbrushes and pollinate all the tomato plants and the gooseberries and raspberries and things. And in some areas of the world, they do do that. So whether we starve or not, I don't know. I think there'll be problems with food supply if the small things like the insects disappear. Um, but that might mean that there'll be mass migrations, which will cause other problems. I think the real problem is that wouldn't it be nice to share the world with everything rather than us dominate it like some huge virus polluting the planet so there's nothing but us left? I think it's a real nightmare scenario. So why not have a vast range of beetles and butterflies and bugs and worms and snails alongside us rather than just us instead of everything else.